Hey everybody, so this week's video is just a short tutorial on how to prepare your pen and ink drawings that you've done traditionally to go in and color digitally. So I've done this a lot with a lot of different pieces just because I'm comfortable inking digitally, but I just prefer doing it physically, like, you know, especially with brush pens, they're just so much more fun on actual paper. But because I do this a lot, I've had to learn how to do this without using the magic wand tool, because when you're working with a much more intricate drawing with a lot of hatching, you just can't use the magic wand tool, like, you're gonna hate yourself. So I learned this method fairly recently, and it's a little complicated, but I'm gonna guide you through this. It's gonna make your whole process of getting pen and ink drawings that you've scanned ready to color digitally so much easier. And the cool thing about this process is it preserves the levels that you had previously. So you can totally use this on like pencil drawings or anything where like the value actually matters. So here we go. Very first thing you're going to do is open up a new Photoshop document and just put in whatever you need. Like just, you know, make it whatever size you need it to be. What I usually do is I'll make it whatever final size I want it to be. In this case, a letter size, eight and a half by 11. I take my ink and just drop it in. So once I have it the size I want it to be, which I scan this at 600 dpi, so resizing isn't an issue, you need to go to image, mode, and grayscale. You don't want to flatten the image, and you definitely don't want to rasterize smart objects, but you do want to discard color information. That's going to give you a pure black and white image. Okay, it's grayscale. Goodbye, yellow. Because this process keeps your colors at whatever like levels they're at, you are going to want to go in and get your levels to where you want them to be. This is an ink drawing, so you know I want it fairly dark. Uh, I like to combine them into one smart object or one layer. That just makes this whole process much easier. You can do whatever you want. Okay, once you have your two things combined, you want to make sure that you do Command A and Command C to copy the full thing. Now this is where the fun part starts. You go to channels and hit that little button down there to make a new layer. You're going to paste in your drawing. Okay, so you see that little circle? It's on the left side in the same bottom bar as the layers tab. When you click that, that's going to select only the white portions of the alpha channel that you just made. Alpha channels only see black and white. So right now, it's only selecting the, the white. However, you want the black to be selected for the next step. So what you're going to do is to invert the selection using Shift-Command-I if you're on Mac, like I am, or Shift-Control-I if you're on Windows. That'll invert your selection so only the black is selected. Now you're going to go back to your Layers tab. You're going to make a new layer. You're going to make sure that the paint bucket is set to only black, and you're going to fill that layer. And now you notice it's all much darker than it was before. That's just because you have like two ink layers on top of each other. So you can now go in, delete your original, and there you go, it's transparent. Uh, the one thing you'll notice is because my original scan is smaller than the total image size, it was smaller than letter size, There, you have those black bars where there simply wasn't any data, so, so the Apple channels filled them. Sometimes you can use magic wands to get rid of that, sometimes you can't. Like, yeah, you see that? It's selecting data from the paper for whatever reason. So you can just go in and use your marquee tool as a square, and that'll get rid of it. So there you go, we have our finished star butterfly. And look, she's transparent. So now I can go in and do my flats and my shading. So now that you're done making it transparent, so your colors you know, actually show up, you're gonna wanna switch your mode again from grayscale to RGB or CMYK. Either one works, I tend to work in RGB, but if you're working for print, you're probably going to want CMYK. So to do that, just like before, you go to image, mode, and then RGB or CMYK. And now you're done, and you can color it to your heart's content. Uh, if you like this video and you want more Photoshop tutorials, or you'd like to see the process behind some of my drawings, uh, subscribe, 
I try to upload videos every other week. And see you later.